The following interview was conducted with Faith Wayne Pearson for the Purdue University Oral History Project. It takes place on April 18th in Bonita Springs, Florida at her home. The interviewer is Stephanie Schmitz. Welcome Faith and thank, thank you for you. agreeing to be interviewed. For the record, can you state where and when you were born? Monroeville, Indiana, which is outside of Fort Wayne, in uh, October 24th, 1921. Okay. And can you tell us a little bit about your early life, the town that you grew up in? We moved to, uh, we did a lot of things between the time I was born. My mother and father moved up to Chicago and he got his, his degree there. And he worked the post office all night and he, and he went to school all day. So that was, and then we came down to uh, West Lafayette, mm -hmm. Indiana, took a job as a coach. And what age were you when you moved to West Lafayette? Second grade, I was six. Okay. And then you went to the Morton Community School. It's a Morton School, I don't know. Morton you know. School, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they have, they call it the Morton Community now, I think, but yeah. it was just called the Morton School in the West Lafayette High School. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about growing up in that Chauncey area? I wasn't in Chauncey. Okay. Uh, we, we first moved into Stadium Avenue where the field house is now. Mm -hmm. And the head of the band was on one side of us and the dean of um, Dr. Knapp, I'm not sure what, what he was doing that engineering maybe on the other side so and then they took these houses out and built the, the uh, field house okay so we moved to Stadium Avenue about three blocks away and we, my folks built and bought a house so and and then you went to high school in West Lafayette yes and the high school is just down from Stadium Street on Grant Street and uh, I, high school they Rebuilt the high school. Uh, rebuilt the high school, and but the high school I went to is still there. I don't know what they use it for now, but still there. And what were your favorite subjects in high school? Subjects? Mm -hmm. I just did everything. I don't know. I sports. I was a. I was a captain of the basketball team. Uh, I was on the debate squad. Um, and the Jinx I, Club. Math, I probably, yeah, the Jinx Club was so my friends got together and decided we wanted a club. So we went to the principal to say, could we have a club? And he said, no, you're not allowed to have other clubs. Is that right? So we said, okay, well, we'll, <laughs> we'll do it a different way. So we called ourselves the Jinxers because there were 13 of us. Oh. And do the boys have clubs back then, or was this just a new idea? Oh, there were clubs in school. We had a speech club and an English club and a Latin club and lots, lots of clubs in the school. We just wanted our own club. Ah, I see. And then it was in high school that Amelia Ear Earhart was at Purdue. No, yes, mm -hmm. yes. I started in high school in 1935. And that's right when I graduated came. in 1947, I mean 45, 47. And when you were in high school and Amelia Earhart was at Purdue, how did you get to meet her? She lectured at Purdue in the, I'm trying to think what hall she was in. I think at the Union Building or they have some, some uh, rooms up there that people speak and they have chairs and that kind of thing. And I think that's where I went to, to hear her speak. And it was open to the public. It was not a, a lecture to the Purdue people, but she did do that too. Um, we, living there, we never thought she was doing very much because she wasn't teaching and she wasn't doing those other things. But Dr. Elliott wanted her to publicize and wanted to help her. And of course, we did have one of the earliest airports there. I remember her talking about the airport. Mm -hmm. um, and we had an air show every year. 
So that's how I got interested in aviation. And Amelia, of course, was quite a name, so that's why I went to see her, because she was noteworthy. Do you remember at all what she spoke about? No, I don't. I, I can't even tell you. I have no idea. But you got I went to been a sophomore in high school, and I just was so glad to be there and be able to hear yeah. her. And you got to shake her hand afterwards. And yes, they, you know, you formed a line, and one of the people shook her hand. Uh huh. She was very gracious about the whole thing. She was a very gracious lady. And very retire, re retiring, you know, not the kind of be boisterous and mm -hmm. go out and really. She just is very quiet, took my hand, and it's glad to know you, just like everybody walking through there. Yeah. I wasn't anything special. And can you t talk a little bit about how you got interested in aviation? Well, I, I can because they had air shows every year. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up with the air shows. I mean, saw air shows in my grade school and high school. And uh, Wiley Post and what's his name? Uh, other well-known guy came through on their trip to Alaska when they were killed. They came through and landed at the, at the airport. Oh. It was just a very popular place. There weren't very many airports around. You heard this, the speech about airports today. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, I, I, you know, I just loved it. And uh, I didn't have any idea at first when I went with JC, my brother, to uh, sign up. I'd never heard about it. He saw it in the paper. And then he read, read it. I said, gee, they didn't say you have to be a boy. Mm -hmm. They know they wouldn't take girls. <laughs> he was always very masculine. My dad was, was the one who always expected everything out of me that he expected out of JC. So we, we, and he was two and a half years older than I was. And a terrible, terrible tease. Oh, swear it was Irish. <laughs> I had black and blue marks from the oh. shoulder to the elbow <laughs> on both sides because every time I went by, he gave me a love tap like that. Mm. Like, it toughened um, you up at an early age, I oh, bet. He, he, oh, he, he, he did a lot of things. He put microphones at the headboard of my bed in the back of it, and he lived in the attic with a wire up to the attic, and then whenever he had a girlfriend, girlfriend over, he'd sell tickets to the fellows <laughs> to come listen to us. And uh, I never thought about being so lucky to have all these boys around because my dad had the, this coach, so he had those guys over a lot. And my brother had his guys over, and they were all two or three years older than I was. But I wasn't allowed to date anybody older than I was, so I didn't think about them as dates. You know, oh. They just were people that horse, horse around. Excuse me. 